Hey, good people. This is the Confessions of a Nail Tech podcast. I'm your host, Rashida H. Muhammad, nail tech affectionately known as Ra. I have so much to share with you this evening. Welcome. Let's get started. Hey, good people. Nails by Ra here. Did you miss me? How's it going? No, really. How's it going? I love to hear from you. In fact, I've been getting wonderful feedback from my listeners, and you all are so, so appreciated. Again, when I started the Confessions of a Nail Tech podcast, I had no rhyme or reason. I just knew I had some salon stories that needed to be shared. And if people listened, I was grateful. I want to give a huge shout out to Gloria. She reached out to me over the break to catch up on some episodes, and she also inquired about live listenership. We did take a break. We took a break with the confessions last week for the holidays, my birthday weekend, and Memorial Day. I had a staycation, y'all, and it was amazing. And I got a boyfriend out of it. (laughs) By the time Tuesday came around, I said, "Uh uh-oh, well, we'll just take a break. You work hard, kid. But welcome back. I'm so glad you're here. And before we jump into today's episode, be sure to follow me across all social media platforms at Nails by Ra and visit the Confessions of a Nail Tech blog.wordpress.com to keep up. I'm usually doing nails or giving shout outs to my nail tech friends. Hey, y'all. I appreciate you. All right, over the break, I was able to reflect. I am coming up on the sixth anniversary of graduating from Airy One Bosi's Harkness Center's nail specialty program. And I pondered on what kind of advice did I wish I could have received as an incoming nail salon professional way back when. I came across one of my nail tech friends' posts on Facebook, um, the Nail Teak 716. Make sure you follow them. I'll also put the link in my description for this episode. And she was venting about still learning as a nail technician, which is always going to be a part of your experience as you progress. Um, You are required to complete continuing education units to stay abreast on techniques, skills, new products, procedures, et cetera, so on and so forth. So I have news for my incoming nail tech professionals. The real work begins once you've become licensed. A lot of my friends, a lot of my nail tech friends, myself included, are self-taught, grandfathered in from cosmetology, or went to school specifically for nail design. And we all get questions from aspiring nail techs about the process. And honestly, the only thing that may be the same is how long it takes for your state's capital to release your passing or failing scores from your state board exam. Everything else is not cookie cutter, but that's for a later episode. Happy Tuesday. It's a new month, new goals, new trolls. Listen, here's some advice for all of my incoming nail salon professionals and even my seasoned players. We are coming up on that time of year where graduation is a thing. Uh, Even if you have suffered from the COVID-19, I pray that you are still able to graduate and have everything finished. But I sat long and hard on these 12 things. I'm certain the list could be longer, but 12 is where I had to cut it. In life, you are constantly learning, adapting to new information, and hopefully applying what you learned. There will never be a time where anybody knows everything about anything because things change eventually. I'll say that again. There will never be a time where anybody knows everything about anything because things change eventually. You heard it here first. That is, that is raw-ism. <laughs> my raw-isms. I'm making that up as I go. But my nail tech friend from earlier stated how she gets so many questions about learning how to do nails and that although she was self-taught, 
She still got the formal education, but felt as if the formal education taught her nothing, which I could agree. I couldn't have agreed with her anymore then because it's true. This is a skilled profession and in order to stay in tip top shape, you have to always be in practice, but you also have to remember that you are not invincible. And I say this because I explained that when you get the formal education, meaning you've gone to cosmetology school or you've gone to school specifically for nail salon or nail design, I'll be honest, um, please don't shoot the messenger. The school, the formal education for this only trains you enough to pass your state board exam. I say this wholeheartedly, I've experienced it. I've heard other nail salon professionals experience it and express that that's how they felt. And it felt good to know that I wasn't the only one who felt this way after spending $1,200 of my hard earned cash. Well, at the time it was 1,200. 1,200 to take on something that would change my life, but also feel like I didn't learn much once I was finished. The real work, trust me, and I'll say this again, begins once you have been licensed and working because then you can put to practice what you've learned. So on that note, here are the top 12 things I wish I would have known coming into this business. First up, protecting your brand. This means everything and then some. Yes, you may work in someone else's salon, but it is not, or at least should not, be your permanent situation. You worked too hard for that license, and you work too hard in someone else's salon to stay there permanently as someone else's nail technician. Second, have an end goal in mind. These two are very close sisters. Um, have an end goal in mind in protecting your brand. What do you see yourself doing in the next five to 10 years after getting your license and landing your first salon gig? I'll tell you something. It wasn't until my second year of working for someone else that I began to feel encouraged to do this on my own. I had confirmation from a client, I'll call her a prophetess, <laughs> a prophetess who looked at me in the middle of my service and said, you're going to be a business owner and very wealthy. Don't you worry about money. And I, I promise you all, I, this thought had been in my mind for some years, but at the time I was just thinking about doing her nails. And I don't know if she saw, had a vision when I touched her or what have you, but it sent chills because I knew that owning a business, owning a salon or owning any kind of business, any would be something I do. So always keep that in the back of your mind. What do you see yourself doing in the next five to 10 years after you've gotten your license? What's next? Third, know your worth. I made an entire episode on knowing your worth because it is the most important once you've gained experience. This is why this is in my top five of the 12 because it's, again, it's easy to be taken advantage of, especially if you are an incoming nail technician and you are in a salon for the first time. We like to believe that a lot of the salon owners and business owners are there to keep us in their best interests, but sometimes they are not. It is a money grab and it is a way to increase their income. So you want to know your worth. Know when you are to being taken advantage of. Fourth, avoid burnout. Avoid burnout at all costs. When you start and the busy season hits, you will work later hours than normal and sometimes be expected to come in before the salon opens. And nobody wants to talk about this, but quite a few salons break some labor laws. And I'll just be honest, if we're being, you know, this is my, my platform, so I'm just gonna be real. There are times where we skip meals or we have to hurry up and shove a snack down our throats before finishing up a pedicure and getting someone else in our station. Just be ready for that. 
um, and understand that it is okay to say no and to rest up. As a beauty professional, you are exchanging energy all day. It can be exhausting being in touch with so many personalities and energies. You are expected to be kind, courteous, upbeat, alert at all times, smiling. But let's be honest, we are human. We all have that time when we really just need to take a beat. And that is okay. Avoid burnout. Find something that serves you. I remember when I worked in a little bit shortly after I left the salon the first time, I was, um, I became an administrative assistant for a end of life service um, for a hospital, a hospice care, palliative care. And because of the severity of the situations that we'd be dealing, you know, we're dealing with end of life patients, it can cause burnout. So during orientation, one of the orientation leaders said, what do you do to restore your energy? What do you do that is that brings you joy, that is something for you? And when I raised my hand to tell her what I did, she said, but you're still giving in all of those. You said you, you enjoy manicures, you enjoy pedicures, you enjoy doing, you enjoy Reiki. All of those things exert energy. What are you doing to what are you doing to refill? What do you do? I need you to figure that out and do that because this job can take a toll on you. And I say this applies to beauty professionals as well. All day, five to seven times a week, five to seven days a week in, mo in some cases, you are giving, 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 giving. All week, all day from 10 until seven or nine to six or however your office, however your salon works, you're giving and you can, you can burn out. So I say this, find something, a hobby that has absolutely nothing to do with nails, unless that's just something that you enjoy doing, but find something that restores your energy. Which brings me to my fifth point. It is okay to decline a service. I'll tell you a story. I worked in a salon where there was one client in particular who only wanted the owner to do her nails because nobody else could do nails like the owner. She would often try other nail techs, give them compliments during her service and to their faces, but then complain to the owner after she got her services done later on by the owner. Well, she sat in my chair one day the service went well, and she even tipped me. We were talking and laughing, having a good time. But you already know, she complained to the owner later on about me. I didn't like that. To me, that was dishonest. Because if you don't like something when you sit in my chair and you are paying for it, I tell all of my clients this. If you don't like something I'm doing, tell me. You will not hurt my feelings. If you are paying me for a service, you deserve to have it done the way that you like. Don't say it's good and then complain about it later. Tell me. I'm honest about my craft and my scope of practice. So I let the owner know. I said, this client in particular is not welcome in my chair. I will never touch her nails again. And you guess what? Another time came and she wanted me to do her nails. I had no other clients scheduled and it was my turn in the rotation. But this client was scheduled to have her nails done by the owner who was running late. This client was in a hurry, so she tried to ask me if I could at least start her nails. I looked her stone face in the eye and said, no. She said, but could you? I said, no. I don't care about the money at that point. So I said no to protect my peace and to avoid burnout. It is okay to do that. It is certainly okay to do that. Step six, oh, not step, but point six. Everyone has a rough moment, you guys. My nail tech friend spoke about this in her Facebook post and I agreed with her. I said, even the most seasoned nail technician still experiences broken, chipped, and cracked nails. It happens, it happens. When you are learning new products, when you are asked to demo new products, 
you're asked to do that on purpose by the company so that they can test out on real hands how durable their products are. I can remember I was still in undergrad working in the salon and this was my final year. And I was so focused on my next moves that the salon was put on the back burner. I wanted to finish my degree, of course, but then what? I was so focused on school that my salon's work started to slip. I got focused again, but I say this to tell you that everyone, incoming or seasoned nail salon professionals experiences a rough moment. It's okay, just make sure you pull yourself back together. I'll get you more tips after this break. Welcome back. If you are still with me, hello. Thank you, thank you. We are halfway there. Are you learning anything right now? I hope so. That's always my hope when people come and see me or listen to me, pardon. Make sure you are subscribed to my YouTube channel as well. I'm at Nails by Ra. Also across all social media platforms at Nails by Ra. And stay tuned. Make sure you are on board with my Confessions of a Nail Tech blog.wordpress.com, where although I love talking, I also love typing and blogging. So check me out. Let's jump back into these steps, tips. <laughs> so, seventh, do not compare. I spoke on this in episode three, which was every nail tech's nightmare. Comparing yourself will stifle your creativity. You'll find yourself doubting your own abilities when in fact you are capable beyond measure. So do not compare. Every nail tech is different. Yes, we may use some of the same chemicals and products, but every nail tech is different. Every nail tech has their special thing about them that draws in clientele, that keeps clientele. So do not compare. Everyone has their own groove and you will find other people who groove to what you groove to. So don't compare. Eighth, always be open to learn. This industry is ever changing there will always be more efficient ways to provide nail services. There will always be new products coming out that guarantee a faster dry time and so on and so forth. So be open to learning new ways to offer services, uh, new services to offer and ways to gain more clientele. There are uh, nail supply warehouses down here that also host demo days where some product and brand ambassadors from companies or nail technicians from around the city are endorsed by certain nail salon brands who will actually come out to the warehouses and demo new products or new techniques. They're free most of the time and it, there, there's no harm in going to learn a new technique. Ninth, stay current, stay current. I think eight and nine are close cousins as well. <laughs> so with staying current, there are so many resources. I, I'd probably go blue in the face trying to give them all to you, but I'm going to do my best. Um, I will say to subscribe to Nail Pro Magazines. That was one magazine that I have followed before I was licensed, during school, and then after I was licensed because I just enjoyed the marketing, I enjoyed the pops of color, and then I enjoyed the information that was provided in the magazine. Also, be sure to subscribe to beauty and self-care magazines because chances are you're going to find something nail health related in those. Uh, be sure to stay well abreast on your continuing education unit courses that are offered throughout the year. You are required to complete, and this varies by state, but in the state of Georgia, you are required to complete three to five CEUs, depending on how new your license is. I believe that if you are, if this is your first time renewing, then you do have to complete five. 
I may have to go back to the drawing board, but you do have to complete that. Um, it is seldom that you are audited when you renew your license, but it is good to have completed your CEUs anyway. Hear me out. Unfortunately, the Bronner Bros Convention and the Nail Tech event for the Smokies and quite a few other um, nail tech and beauty oriented trade shows had to be canceled due to COVID. But some of these salon and trade shows where, will be where a lot of these continuing education unit courses are offered and they'll let you know how many, um, how many credits each class is worth. So it's, it's like a one huge convention. I'm also in a sorority. So when we go out to sororities, we have that. When we go out to our um, conferences, it's similar. But um, with the continuing education units, you want to make sure that you're staying up on it. I believe uh, due to the circumstances now, you can take these online strictly. So I'll also link some information for that. We're almost done. Tenth, learn how to be flexible. Flexibility will be your friend. You will have to learn how to manage your work-life balance like the nail professional you are. It is important to stay on top of everything mentioned before regarding CEUs, when your license is up for renewal, product recalls, bills, clients, scheduling, and so much more. But don't worry, it does get easier. Last two. Eleventh, develop other skills that complement your services. For example, if you own a nail salon or you work in a nail salon, people usually come in for their nails, eyebrows, waxing, eyebrow tinting, eyelashes, makeup, or some kind of merchandise. These small knickknacks pay for themselves and are relatively low cost investments as far as equipment and maintenance. Equipment and maintenance are concerned. I bought a paraffin dip, paraffin wax machine for an ex well not even experience it was an expensive experiment at the time but I got my money back within a week so it's it, it continues to pay for itself and they last a long time so your wax machines your kit your tools those last very long it may seem like a bit of an investment up front but once you've made your money back it's all profit like anything else but it's good to have these small knickknacks here and there. These these nice things help pay for things. Uh, for example, you are also billed by the credit card companies as a nail salon owner. So Visa, MasterCard, Amex, Discover, they um, the merchant also bills you for each transaction. So having these smaller inner workings throughout your salon to help pay for those kinds of expenses is very helpful. And the last... But not least, tip, piece of advice that I could give you, and I'm going to leave this with you, is to master humility. Stay humble. I can't stress this enough. I've met many rude nail techs in my day. And I had to understand that in a high volume salon, the customer service may start to slack. However, do not be that nail tech who is arrogant, boisterous, and rude because we all are here to learn and progress. Don't be that know-it-all nail tech and remain humble. Hey there, I know we covered a lot today, but let me break it down for you. I gave you 12 tips to my incoming nail salon professionals. Congratulations, you did it. You finished your 250 to 525 credit hours, you took your exam, you passed your exam, and now you are licensed. Congrats. Make sure you protect yourself, your brand. Have an end goal in mind. Know your worth. Avoid burnout. Understand that it is okay to decline a service for your peace of mind. Know that everyone has a rough moment. Do not compare yourself. Always be open to learn. Stay current. 
learn flexibility, develop other skills that complement your services, and most importantly, stay humble. Until next time. Thank you for tuning in to the Confessions of a Nail Tech podcast. I've been your host, Rashida H. Muhammad, nail tech affectionately known as Ra. Make sure you tune in next week, Tuesday, for our next episode. Looking forward to hearing from you. In the meantime, subscribe to the Confessions of a Nail Tech podcast and make sure you stay in the loop by following me across the board on social media at Nails by Ra. Also visit me at www.nailsbyra.com. Until next time.